hydrogen fuel cell vehicle so this is the we can say sub category we can say the this is the sub category of e vehicles so hydrogen fuel cell vehicles basically they run on the hydrogen fuel so we can we can see in the budget 2023-24 the government has actively promoted the green hydrogen Good morning students, welcome back to Plutus IS. Right. Today is our 36th day. 36th day. Today we will study about the electric vehicles or e-vehicles in short they are called. Right. This topic is also very very important from point of uh, our uh, examination. Right. Especially prelims. Uh, we can say this is an emerging technology. I mean, previously uh, there were not that much developments or uh, Im importance was not that much. However, uh, due to the changing dynamics, uh, we we are seeing surge in the number of electronic ve electric vehicles. So uh, the importance of this topic is also increasing. Right. So in 2023, there was a question on the hydrogen fuel cell, which is actively or uh, I mean increasingly uh, relevant with this topic electric uh, vehicles so there was a question previous year also so be update with this topic uh, because I mean it, it has become an important area because there are a lot of uh, we can say developments uh, uh, on this topic right we will see some uh, brief introduction to the electric vehicles right so the adoption of electric vehicles represents a transformative shift because uh, till now the predominant uh, predominant vehicles that are being used are we can say uh, the uh, petrol petroleum using vehicles or we can say when it comes to heavy vehicles four wheelers etc they are predominantly diesel using vehicles when we see the car segment both uh, we can say petrol and uh, diesel diesel vehicles are uh, very dominating however with the change in price uh, mechanism almost uh, the price difference price uh, difference between the we can say diesel and petrol diesel and petrol it has been i mean reduced to a uh, large extent and almost there is only 10 to 15 rupees difference between the price of the uh, diesel and petrol so with that now predominantly the cars whatever the cars that are coming also mostly based on the petrol all right as you all know a diesel is generally considered as a dirty fuel uh, when com especially compared to the petrol so however i mean earlier there was uh, diesel price was very less because the we can say generators generators were being used in agriculture for providing irrigation so whenever canal irrigation or we can say well irrigation was there so the diesel uh, diesel powered engines generally they are called as generators they were uh, being used so right to subsidize irrigation so the government policy was to encourage the agricultural sector or provide subsidies to the farmers so in that effort the diesel diesel has been subsidized because diesel was predominantly i mean the generators uh, that were used in irrigation they have predominantly diesel based engines however the we can say automobile industry it has uh, taken the advantage of this uh, subsidies diesel subsidies and uh, predominantly the auto industry produce diesel based diesel based cars diesel is supposed to be used in especially heavy vehicles like uh, trucks lorries etc however many cars have also come so basically the price of the diesel cars uh, was also less so this led to dieselization of economy dieselization of economy so so because of this reason uh, the price uh, subsidy whatever subsidy was there that was almost i mean this was gradually started uh, started being removed 
so now there is a little subsidy on diesel also so the price difference between the diesel and petrol is also very less right so with this development the car segment also most predominantly moved towards uh, petroleum based cars however as you all know the petroleum also a uh, we can say a crude oil it is a derivative from the crude oil as you all know it is leading to release of greenhouse gases and they are basically i mean many polluting gases uh, gases will be released from the we can say the uh, we can say automatic automotive vehicles because they are using crude based fuels uh, either it is diesel or petroleum so to uh, to address this challenge especially the release of greenhouse gases and also in urban areas urban areas the pollution that is emanating i mean dust particles that are emitting uh, emanating from the icis internal combustion engines so basically inter internal combustion engine is placed within the we can say vehicle itself that will power the uh, that will power the vehicle for moving so basically the uh, i mean the pollutants that are coming from the inter internal combustion engine is one is dust particles next is uh, greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide carbon monoxide etc many glasses are uh, re- uh, gases are released similarly the sound pollution also right so because of the we can say uh, running of the engine there is lot of sound will come so this created sound pollution also so to address all these challenges the electric vehicles or e vehicles have been actively uh we can say promoted promoted now we can say the we can say the dynamic ha- dynamics how sh- uh, shifted people have aware uh, people gained awareness about the electro- electric vehicles we can see nowadays many we can say two wheelers two wheelers are already running on the road one example is ola bike so we can see here and there so the electric bikes especially the ola bikes people are start people have started using so we can then we can say there is a shift in momentum shift in momentum towards the electric vehicles though the percentage is very less now when compared to the total fleet of the vehicles however we can say the momentum has shifted towards the electric vehicles right so this is the b- brief background of about the electric vehicles now we will see and understand other things about electric vehicles right. definition if you see it is defined as a mode of transportation propelled by electric motor so earlier we uh, used to see a diesel diesel based or petroleum based motor petroleum so ici internal combustion engine ic or ic internal combustion engine was placed in the vehicle so here we can see the absence of ic internal combustion engine so there will be electric motor in, instead of this particular motor or uh, internal combustion engine in contrast to traditional vehicles that rely on internal combustion engines burning uh, burning fuel and uh, gases for the power so they encompass a wide uh, range of transportation options including cars trucks buses trains ships etc so experiments are going on especially for the heavy vehicles we will see uh, we will listen one popular uh, we can say name tesla so basically it is uh, investing a lot in developing e vehicles in the category of we can say heavy vehicles heavy vehicles especially we can see trucks so tesla is in, uh, increasingly investing in especially the trucks and also another segment it is focusing is the electric cars so in these uh, segments we can say tesla is increasingly uh, putting its resources and it is spending lot in research and development so any vehicle any range of vehicles if they are running on a electric motor they all called uh, they can be called as electric vehicles right so they can be powered by different ways so some draw electricity from external sources through a collector system while others are self contained 
with onboard power generation system so these type of vehicles which uh, consist a uh, source of uh, power within the vehicle they are basically known as battery vehicles and those who are collecting electricity from we can say external source they are, they can be called as right they can be called as plug in electric vehicles right right so these are the i mean they are powered by different ways one is the power source will be on board especially for example we can say the hydrogen hydrogen fuel cell it is one example right so basically the power source of the power is within the we can say vehicle however in some cases the i mean there will be power collector collector which collects the power externally so the those are called as plug in electric vehicles right right see the onboard systems they may include batteries so when the power source is within the vehicle so those sources can be batteries like lithium ion batteries you know we can say still uh, till even till these are the we can say popular power source battery source lithium ion batteries they can be solar panels also they can be fuel cells also i have given the example hydrogen fuel cell so it is also increasingly being experiment uh, to make the hydrogen fuel cell a success right similarly electric electric generators they can also be onboarded so these convert various fuels into electricity to drive the vehicle right so this can be seen as a definition of the electric vehicles so the major change we can say there will there will be a electric motor instead of the internal combustion engine right so this is the major difference with the uh, we can say conventional or traditional vehicles now we will see the classification of vehicles we will see different types of electric vehicles so first major category is plug in electric vehicles so these represent a uh, the plug in electric vehicles they represent a significant shift towards sustainable transportation they draw a power from external er electricity electricity sources to charge rechargeable battery packs that propel the vehicle so best example is the batteries lithium ion batteries right so these are called as plug in electric vehicles right further plug in electric vehicles they can be divided into uh, two main categories one is plug in hybrid electric vehicles right so here plug in hybrid hybrid vehicles right they are hybrid ve electric vehicles capable of recharging their batteries from external power source such as wall socket in addition to using on board engine and generator for charging so right wall socket means see, the present bike i think ola bike it will i mean extract the i mean it will take power from the wall socket only right so we can recharge the ola bike in our home itself right Uh, in addition to they can use the on board engine and generator for charging also next is uh, they offer flexibility by combining electric and internal combustion propulsion systems so whenever there is a ch uh, chance of using power source the charge the batteries will be charged by we can say the power source however this option is there they uh, run in a traditional way by running on the internal combustion engine so this is basically called as plug in hybrid electric vehicles next one is battery electric vehicles second category is we can say this is the pure kind of electric vehicle pure electric vehicles because the internal combustion engine which is basically used in the traditional vehicles it is completely absent in this vehicle so it is icg is completely absent all right so they also known as pure pure electric vehicles or all electric vehicles they solely uh, on they run solely on chemical energy stored in rechargeable battery packs for propulsion right so in hybrid electric vehicles the rechargeable part is there 
I mean, uh, the vehicle will run on electric motor at all, but also the, we can say internal combustion engine is also placed there. So whenever the recharge option is not there, uh, the vehicle start running on the, we can say traditional way by uh, burning the, we can say petroleum or diesel, right. They do not feature the in internal combustion engine, uh, fuel cell or fuel tank, right. So this part is not there in the vehicles. So they are diverse income, income, encompassing. So here also various segments are there. So many type of vehicles you, you can see cars, buses, motorcycles, etc. So the application, I mean, this technology is also being used in various range of vehicle types, right. So this is the one classification of electric vehicles. So here in the picture, you can see the uh, electric vehicle and its component right so here you can see the electric motor here you can see in the back side i mean this is one type the technology varies uh, from one company to another company and also this technology may change according to the time also here i am presenting one type of electric vehicle so here you can see in the ba battery here you can see the charger and uh, this uh, plug to be charged uh, here backside also you can uh, also see the fuel storage uh, also you can see the lightweight um, materials are used in the vehicle so that the propulsion uh, become uh, easy and faster right here you can see normal or traditional engine that is internal combustion engine so radiator is also there so whatever the parts that are shown are generally they are uh, components especially the components of electric vehicles right next one is hydrogen fuel cell vehicle so this is the we can say sub category we can say the this is the sub category of e vehicles right so hydrogen fuel cell vehicles basically they run on the hydrogen fuel so we can we can see in the budget 2023-24 the government has actively promoted the green hydrogen i mean the hydrogen that is generated through the green technology green technology means which cause minimum minimum or no greenhouse gases so the hydrogen generally developed on green technology that is being used as a we can say fuel for many purposes as a source of energy many for many purposes so subsequently i mean in this philosophy the vehicles electric vehicles they are also using hydrogen fuel cell as a we can say source of energy hydrogen especially the hydrogen that, that will be stored in the vehicle and it will uh, the vehicle will consume the oxygen from the uh, atmosphere and uh, these fuels will be burned and energy will be generated and uh, that particular energy will be used for uh, propelling the vehicle so that is the formula involved in the hydrogen fuel cell vehicle right so we can say it is a subtype of electric vehicles they use hydrogen gas to generate electricity so electric motor if we see like regular regular electric vehicles uh, the hydrogen fuel cell uh, vehicles also they use electric motors to power the wheels so here instead of batteries instead of lithium ion batteries the fuel cell hydrogen fuel cell will be used as a source of power so unlike the electric vehicles that rely on batteries so as you all know the major obstacle in the we can say adoption of the electric vehicles is the battery battery is the major problem because the available or commercial like commercialized battery technology till that till today is lithium ion batteries lithium ion batteries so to i mean prepare these uh, materials we can say lithium and other minerals or we can say uh, these metals are very very important especially the mineral also some other rare earth minerals rare 
especially lith lithium is required and also other rare earth minerals or materials are required so basically this lithium uh, we can say this mineral is available only in few countries and the technology is also we can say uh, confined to few countries like china All right so basically i mean we have to improve whatever the vehicles that are being produced now in india so all them are almost using the imported batteries imported batteries and batteries when it comes to batteries uh, development of battery so china is forefront so we had to depend and uh, dependent on china so this is battery part is becoming very very costlier so i mean majority of the price whatever the electric vehicle is costing so majority of the price is for only the batteries which are which is so uh, which store power so because of this obstacle the adoption of the electric vehicles has been delayed so in the challenges also when we study the challenges we will understand about this part more so because i mean major obstacle in adoption of the vehicles we can say that is uh one major factor is the battery components so battery basically the battery used is lithium ion battery so we do not have the technology or the minerals required for preparing this uh, lithium, ion, lithium ion batteries so though the electric vehicle is produced in india the battery we have to import it uh, generally from china and we have to use it and uh, we can say the cost of the battery the cost of the battery is almost 35 to we can say 45% of the total cost of the vehicle so this has become a lot of we can say a big constraint uh, uh, I mean, furthermore we actually want to internalize the technology and we do not want to depend on depend uh, depend on the imports of other other countries especially china so we can say this has become the major hurdle so to overcome uh, that hurdle hydrogen fuel cell has been we can say uh, thought of and it will replace the battery lithium ion battery and the, in that place the hydrogen fuel cell will be uh, placed and it, it will act as the source of power for propelling or we can say moving the vehicle right so we will understand the technology here so here hydrogen tank will be there this will uh, i mean store the hydrogen especially we can say the green hydrogen hydrogen which is generated through the we can say cleaner technologies green technology right so it will be uh, sent to the hydrogen fuel cell so here from the uh, oxygen that is we can say harvested from the environment it will also be sent to the we can say uh, fuel cell fuel cell uh, mechanism you might be knowing so one anode will be there and the cathode will be there so hydrogen and oxygen will act as we can say opposite poles in the battery and because when a circuit is completed in this battery electrons will be released and uh, that electron flow when it uh, that uh, release of electrons they form a flow you can say electricity is generated i mean this will come in the we can say physics part uh, you might be knowing you have studied this we can say battery technology in the lower classes so basically whatever the anode and the cathode is there so basically the oxygen and the hydrogen they i mean they act as opposite poles as anode and a cathode that will uh, we can say result in the release of electrons so when flow of electrons uh, is formed that will uh, that will be generated i mean electricity will be generated that generated electricity will be used to propel the vehicle so basically that is the technology involved in the hydrogen fuel cell vehicles right so here in blue color you can see electric engine uh so uh, that is in the blue color right here hydrogen tank this will be store hydrogen will be stored in the hydrogen tank fuel cell is there and the battery so whatever uh, the uh, energy that will come so battery will be smaller here there is no need for a we can say large battery large battery means so for the range of the entire traveling it has to store the energy here whatever the small amount of energy that is L or electricity released here it has to store that energy for only temporary period so one side the 
uh, energy stored will be used by the engine and uh, in another side it will be getting recharged again so here the need for only a small battery it is not a bigger battery right this is the technology involved in the hydrogen fuel cell vehicle right so here if we see the technology hydrogen reaction uh, reaction will be uh, held here so the fuel cell stack combines hydrogen with oxygen from the air producing electricity and water vapor as a by product this means the fuel cell vehicle emit zero harmful tailpipe emissions uh, so only the water water vapor and uh, heat will be emitted as a we can say by product so this technology is also a very uh, we can say clean technology compared to other electric vehicles right so why it is most cleaner energy though in other electric vehicles we are using we say battery power so the power we can say that is used to recharge the batteries it may come from a dirty sources it may come from the dirty sources right for example uh, coal uh, till now we know in india the we can say the majority major source of power is uh, even now it is coal so to recharge the electric vehicles the dirtier fuel fuel coal might be used so however uh, the coal coal uh, is a we can say gr uh, greenhouse emitting fuel so only here the place the place of pollution is changed so uh, instead of uh, the pollution being released in the uh, the vehicle using area especially we can say in urban areas so i mean the pollution is not being released in urban area it is the source of pollution shifted to we can say the power plant located area power plant located area so pollution is uh, taking place we can say the place of pollution has been changed so it is changed from the pollution using uh, area to the uh, we can say the area where the power plant had uh, we can say thermal power plant is located right so some advantage is there because the urban areas are more most pollution polluted and they are affected by we can say the uh, polluting gases like carbon dioxide etc and also the noise pollution it is higher so however a uh, few of the problems or we can say majority of the problems have been addressed by electric vehicles but somewhere somewhere uh, internally in the country the pollution is taking place however with the hydrogen fuel cell especially adopting the uh, green hydrogen which is the hydrogen which is produced through greener technologies or cleaner technologies if that is being used we can say we can say we can eliminate almost all the uh, pollut pollutants that are being generally released from the traditional vehicles right so if we are using hydrogen produced from the traditional practices that will not help so basically we have to source the hydrogen that is produced through we can say greener technologies right another point is here in the hydrogen fuel cell vehicle hydrogen as an energy carrier so here while hydrogen is often referred to as a fuel it actually acts as more like an energy carrier so similar to how battery store electricity hydrogen stores energy in a chemical bond so in hydrogen as you know so h2 so h h there is a bond right so in the fuel cell the bond between these two hydrogen it will be broken so here an electron will be released so here a series of electrons uh, a flow of electrons is generated this is we uh, generally known as us it is the uh, electric current flow of the electric current so basically this current will be used as the we can say uh, used as a power to propel the vehicle right till now we have understood the definition of the electric vehicles and the types of electric vehicles and also the hydrogen fuel cell vehicle one of the sub categories of the electric vehicles right apart from that you should be in a position to understand the trends in the market trends in the electric vehicles as i how i have already told there is a shift in momentum shift in 
momentum towards the electric vehicles, especially in the two-wheeler category. So uh, in Delhi, you can see the majority of the, we can say most of the, we can say delivery, delivery boys, they have started using this electric vehicles. However, the Ola bike has also become very famous and the, we can say the commuters are using Ola bike and uh, the food delivery boys, they have started using, we can say small electric vehicles, especially the two wheeler. So there is a momentum, shift in momentum, right. So there was, I mean, no proper regulation. Also, they can say there was no, uh, no stable regulatory mechanism. Government was jilly dally about the regulation, what to do, what to do with the promotion of electric vehicles, what we have to do with the traditional vehicles, etc. So there is a lot of jilly dally. So instead of that, the uh, Indian electric vehicle market is experiencing, experiencing rapid expansion with the sales soaring by over 45 percent in two, two, early 2024. So by the end of 23, 2000. 23, the total EV registrations ex exceeded 1.5 million units, making a notable surge in the slight, right, slightly over previous year, the number was 1.5 million uh, previous year. So in 2023, we can see 1.5 million registrations have happened for electric vehicles. All right. So here, the rise in EV registrations has elevated India's overall EV market penetration to 6.3%, so causing a substantial advancement in the EV adaptation. Right. So the overall share of electric vehicles in India's auto sales that has been uh, risen sharply to 6.38% in 2023. However, it was only 1.75% in 2020. One. Right. However, if we see the total market share, so despite the growth in sales, the electric vehicles still represent a small percentage of total automate, uh, total overall automotive market in India. So if we see the total fleet of the vehicles is, is also, total fleet is also, so most of the vehicles still comprise of the uh, traditional vehicles which have internal combustion. Uh, the electric, the company, uh, composition of the electric vehicles, we can say it is less than 1%. So it will take some time. It will take some time to increase the overall proportion of the electric vehicles. In the, we can say total fleet of the uh, vehicles, right. So this is some of the, we can say trends and uh, figures, facts and figures about the electric vehicles. Now we will understand another important aspects, the government initiatives or the, we can say initiatives of the government uh, to, we can say, promote the electric vehicles. Promote electric vehicles. Right. So earlier people, uh, people were not that much aware and there was apprehensions uh, and doubts about the we can say reliability of reliability and uh, electric vehicles. So that apprehension is being overcome now. Uh, the reason behind that is the government has come up with various initiatives about promoting the electric vehicles. We will see some of those initi initiatives now. First one is Fame India program, foster adoption and manufacturing of electric vehicles. So it is basically started in 2015. It uh, was for the period of we can say uh, five years uh, it uh, ran till 2019 so it is a flagship initiative launched by the government of india to incentivize adoption and manufacturing of electric and hybrid vehicles so basically it gave incentives in the form of subsidies tax breaks etc and also, whenever uh, the final purchase is made, the customer has given a hands-on subsidy whenever he was purchasing the vehicle. Right. So this scheme offers financial incentives uh, to buyers and manufacturers of EVs, thereby reducing the upfront cost of electric vehicles and encouraging their uptake. Right. So it also supports the deployment of charging infrastructure. So the key to the electric vehicles is 
the availability of the we can say charging infrastructure so charging infrastructure is akin to the uh, we can say the present we can say petrol bunks petrol bunks will be there so to refill the vehicle so the i mean we the how the network of the petrol bunks has increased or is there so for electric vehicles the charging network is required so if we are going from one place to another once the charging is uh, i mean the battery is uh, emptied so we have to recharge the battery again so for that there should be uh, the facility of charging so basically that is known as the charging infrastructure so basically the scheme also incentivizes the creation and the deployment of charging infrastructure so right right so we can say the we can say charging infrastructure the availability of charging infrastructure it was we can say second major concern first major concern i have told the cost of electric vehicles because uh, the critical technology battery technology or the component component of battery we have to we had to import it from china so it was i mean uh, the cost were higher so because of that the adoption of the vehicles has been we can say uh, lesser so the second concern is the uh, charging infrastructure because the charging infrastructure even today it is not available properly in all across the country especially in the hinterland especially in the rural areas so in urban areas we can say it is gradually developing we can see many recharge stations especially they are created those facilities have been created by the government only so that people may come for come forward come forward and purchase electric vehicles so we can say it is a second hurdle so the fame india fame india the scheme also uh, has a component that component is to deploy uh, deployment of charging infrastructure all right so once this uh, 2019 uh, the fame india scheme has completed in 2019 second phase has been started that is famously known as fame 2 so it is started in 2019 uh, for faster adoption and same same name faster adoption and uh, manufacturing of electric vehicles so this also offers a range of incentives for both electric vehicles electric vehicle manufacturers and buyers so the budget for fame 2 was 10000 crores 10000 crore rupees have been allocated for fame to scheme right so the incentives incentives were similar to that of the fame one scheme tax breaks favorable financing options as well as exempt exemptions from road tax and registration fee so these facilities all financial incentives were there in the fame to scheme also right next another initiative important initiative is national electric mobility mission plan right national electricity electricity electric mobility mission plan right so it is a comprehensive initiative initiative aimed at promoting widespread adoption of electric vehicles in india so under this mission the government has sent, set ambitious targets for electrification electrification across various vehicle segments including two wheelers three wheelers cars and buses right so it focuses majorly on promoting domestic manufacturing developing charging infrastructure and creating a supportive policy policy framework to facilitate transition to electric mobility right so these are the components one more component <coughs> uh one more initiative by the government is national mission on transformative mobility and battery storage so we have understood the importance of battery storage also so here there there is a national mission has been started and transformative mobility and battery storage so this mission also supports the establishment of battery manufacturing facilities uh, because we have understood the problem of lithium ion batteries we are dependent on imports from china so this to overcome this mission the particular to overcome this problem this particular mission has been started right uh, so the battery manufacturing facilities one of the major objectives of this mission so they also known as the 
गीगा स्केल बैटरी प्लांट्स टू इंश्योर अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ एडवांस्ड बैटरी टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स राइट दिस इज द मेजर ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस वी कैन से मिशन नेशनल मिशन ऑन ट्रांसफॉर्मेटिव मोबिलिटी एंड बैटरी स्टोरेज राइट राइट अनदर वी कैन से लेटेस्ट डेवलपमेंट इन इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स दैट इज न्यू इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल पॉलिसी 2024 24 so apart from these schemes whatever the three four schemes i have discussed so also remember this uh, this major we can say development new electric vehicle policy 2024 so you will read more about this in current affairs however i have briefly covered it so that it will be helpful for you in the examination right so this announced policy is announced uh in march 24 only especially march 15th is the date so on 15th march 2024 this policy has been announced so basically this uh, this policy has two main thrust areas so those are boosting domestic manufacturing this is the one major component boosting the domestic manufacturing of electric vehicles and second one is adoption promoting the electric vehicle adoption right if you see the components in the first segment uh, boosting the domestic manufacturing so this policy aims to make india a manufacturing hub for electric vehicles it offers significant benefits uh, to companies that set up local production units so incentives if you see the facts so companies investing a minimum of 500 500 million dollars they get imported duty concessions on electric cars priced above 35000 dollars right so there is a cap on number of imported cars allowed in this concessional rate so i think the cap is electric uh, 8000 electric vehicles so the the imports should not be more than 8000 units similarly the policy also incentivizes companies gra to gradually increase local component usage that is domestic value addition or dva to 50% within 5 years so this has i mean indirectly or directly or indirectly it will indianize indianize the we can say production of production of e vehicles right so for promoting ev adoption there were generally i mean basically the concessions are there for we can say customers or consumers right so uh, there are there are some uh, certain subsidies have been given to uh, two wheeler uh, uh, for electric two wheelers and the three wheelers uh, three wheeler purchases uh, the focus has shifted to long term long term infrastructure development so the fame uh, fame scheme and the fame india uh, fame two schemes they have focused generally on the financial incentives however in this policy through this policy the focus has has been shifted from incentivizing individual purchases to uh, long term creation of infrastructure long term infrastructure development the focus has been shifted to this particular area right so subsidies for uh, two wheeler electric vehicles they have been reduced but still available and uh, the policy focuses on expanding the charging infrastructure to reduce range anxiety so what is this range range anxiety we will understand when we discuss the challenges for the electric vehicles so basically it is about how far i can go uh, with my electric vehicles because the recharge equipment i mean recharge uh, recharge infrastructure that is not available throughout the country so what happens once the uh recharge i mean the battery is uh, died down or the recharge has been reduced so that is the range anxiety so how far i can go so if we take the traditional vehicles the we can say the petrol bunks are located almost everywhere so uh, once the petrol is uh, over we can uh, i mean we can get the petrol but that is not the case with the electric vehicles because the charging infrastructure is not there so that is causing the range anxiety how far i can go 
so whether the recharge infrastructure is available or not so because of this reason people were not buying the electric vehicles so we can say this is the third major problem third major problem for adoption of electric vehicles so this particular policy also tries to address this aspect about uh, it tries to uh, uh, address the range uh, we can say range or anxiety or by creating charging infrastructure right so this policy is expected to overall if we summarize the policy the policy is expected to attract major global manufacturers like tesla to set up shop in india right so with this policy the world i mean the major companies across the world they are expected to uh, come to india and they start manufacturing in india right similarly encourage development of electric vehicle technology and components within the country third one is bring down the overall cost of electric vehicles in the long run so basically the major objective is to indianize indianize the electric vehicle production uh, and also reduce the cost of the electric vehicles so that it becomes affordable for the people to buy the electric vehicles so this is all about the new electric vehicle policy 2020 right similarly one more objective is reduce the reliance on fossil fuels and air pollution in urban areas so this is obviously this is going to happen when traditional vehicles are reduced and electric vehicles come more into use so the fossil fuel dependence on the fast fossil fuels will be reduced uh, especially in the urban areas because they are causing lot of pollution in the urban areas right right so finally we will understand the chal challenges and uh, barriers for the adoption of electric vehicles high upfront cost we have understood already so the main culprit is battery technology here we have understood the lithium ion batteries lithium ion batteries so basically they are costly we are not producing producing them in india we are importing them from china and they are costlier so they use expensive lithium ion batteries that need to be large enough to produce provide a decent driving range so this makes the evs significantly more expensive than a uh, comfortable gasoline powered vehicles i mean traditional internal combustion engine vehicles right similarly another uh, we can say major challenge is limited driving range so while improving battery range anxiety is a major concern for many potential electric vehicle owners so people worry about running out of charge especially on long trips due to the lack of widespread charging stations across india right so third major aspect is charging infrastructure right so there simply aren't enough charging stations available especially fast charging uh, stations for long trips right this can be a problem for people who live in apart uh, who live in apartments or areas without easily access to charging right so this is the major problem so basically the people who live in apartments let's say so the vehicle uh, will be parked in the gro ground floor so uh, i mean however they will be living in the we can say upper floors 20th floor 21st 22nd floor so they cannot recharge their vehicle overnight so that will be a another problem right next is battery limitations so lithium ion battery technology has its limitations charging times can be long compared to refueling a gas powered car right so battery degradation over time can also reduce an evs uh, we can say driving range similarly some fewer problems are there and um, some other problems are there like environmental impact on battery production so the mining of materials for lithium ion batteries can have negative environmental uh, environmental and social impulsions additionally disposal of used batteries is a growing concern however when we compare this with the traditional vehicles which release uh, carbon dioxide uh, carbon dioxide and other type of gases including the dust dust particles so this may not be a major concern concern however still it is a concern so we can say this is a concern 
for the future time not for the present times however the major concerns these are the three major concerns try to remember them not only for the prelims for the mains examination also they are important so if there is a question on the challenges associated with the adoption of ele electric vehicles you can discuss these three aspects right so this is some information about the electric vehicles so it is i mean the technology is in use there are lot of developments are going so a question can be expected from this topic right now we will see a question that is asked in uh, previous year only in 2023 the question is about uh, the question is with reference to the green hydrogen consider the following statements right statement 1 it can be used directly as a fuel for in internal combustion yes it can be used but the technology required is very critical very advanced technology is required however at present theoretically it is possible i mean theoretical technology proves that hydrogen fuel Uh, I mean, it can be directly used for internal combustion. So, few days be before we have discussed the cryogenic technology. Cryogenic technology. Uh, when we were discussing the launch vehicles, especially the GSLV, geosynchronous uh, satellite launch vehicle. So, there the fuels were, if you remember, fuels were liquid hydrogen and liquid. oxygen so it is possible uh, using the hydrogen directly in the internal combustion engine as a fuel so however the technology is very very critical so it takes uh, some more time to use uh, that uh, we can say hydrogen as a fuel in the we can say for civilian purposes for driving the vehicles or for propelling the vehicles it will take some time right second statement is however theoretically it is possible we are using it in the we can say rockets uh, however uh, to improve the technology and uh, we can say to create safe environment safe containers uh, it takes some more time so even to we have studied the hydrogen fuel cell vehicles even to store the hydrogen in the normal vehicles the containers containers have to be very very powerful because uh there is a chance of blast in this hydrogen uh, fuel tanks so here there are concerns about the in the hydrogen fuel cell vehicles uh we have discussed earlier in this present uh, in this class so there are concern, concerns about the safety concerns about the storage of oxygen in the vehicles so we need a critical technology very advanced technology to store the hydrogen in the vehicle right so try to remember this concerns also uh, when you are discussing the we can say hydrogen hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles right second uh, statement is it can be blended with natural gas and used as a fuel for heat or power generation yes this is also possible we can do like this third statement is it can be used in the hydrogen fuel cell to run vehicles yes it can be done we have studied it in the hydrogen fuel cell vehicles so along with the oxygen it will be used as a source of power in the fuel cell it is known as hydrogen fuel cell it is being experimented in the use of electric vehicles so all the three statements are correct correct option is options right so this is all for today thank you thank you for joining the class uh, see you next time until then have a good day